King Spa. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, you know, I'm going there after. I'm going there after I get home. Oh, nice. I need, I need to get some back work done too. Yeah. Okay, Six, real education is yet to be born, has not happened yet. Real education will make you consciously innocent. Child is innocent and real educa education will add consciousness. Right now our schools, colleges, and universities destroy innocence. Rather than helping you, education harms you. Of course it goes on saying it's for your sake, but the tree has to be judged by the fruit. That the whole world is living in such a mess and such a chaos is enough proof. Because this is the byproduct of our education, civilization, culture. There's enough proof in the human beings we have created. They're all in anxiety, despair, anguish. And they're all bored, tired, exhausted, not feeling any joy, not feeling any, even any meaning in their lives. Almost always on the verge of committing suicide. A little push from any accidental event, and they will commit suicide. Or they will go mad. This is what we have made of human beings. We have pushed them into a place from where they either have to go on living a stupid life utterly devoid of meaning, or they have to commit suicide or go mad. Only three alternatives are left for them, and none of them is of any worth. My work here consists of creating a real education. To me, real education means your innocence has to be protected, respected, honored, because it is a gift from existence. It is immensely precious. In fact, there is nothing more precious. Out of that innocence, you will attain to love, to bliss, to godliness. Out of their innocence, all great values are going to be born. Hence, it should not be destroyed. It should be protected. It should be helped and nourished. And the best way to protect it is to give you some sort of awareness. That's what meditation is all about, creating awareness in you, so that your innocence is no longer in darkness, but in full light. Somewhat of a reflection of the educational system in America versus elsewhere. That um, this more American, I guess, emphasis on I think training. I think most of the world is heading towards American values. So he's probably talking about education throughout the globe. Right. Because I know in China, it's, or rather in the Asian uh, field, I might be wrong, the world's announcing China, but um, the education um, is to get into the major universities. And once you get in there, then you are able to um, enjoy the luxuries of pastime uh, versions of the American system. Said, we have not been able to create a society which can allow intelligence to grow to its peaks. We are still living under primitive fear. We are still living with a thousand and one taboos and superstitions. Meditation means getting rid of all this nonsense that society imposes upon you. Meditation means freedom from all the structures imposed on you by others. Then the mirror will again be clean and you can again reflect that which is. God is another name for that which is, nothing else. Once the layers of dust that have been put upon your mirror are removed, you are capable of reflecting reality. And once reality is reflected as it is, you start responding to it and become responsible for the first time. is to bring eternal peace, silence, joy to you. And the miracle is that it wells up within you. Meditation simply removes all the barriers in its path. It removes all the rocks and the streams start flowing. And once you have known it has nothing to do with anything on the outside, you have a great independence, great freedom. You don't depend on anybody. You can be absolutely joyous in your aloneness. Your aloneness becomes luminous and is no longer lonely. It is full of joy, a dancing aloneness, a singing aloneness, 
has great beauty and great culture and great music. Three forty nine. All religions have exploited man's cowardice. They make you afraid, and once you are trembling in fear, you are easily exploited, manipulated. Then the priest can take you under their protection and say, son, son, don't be worried. We will protect you. We will pray for you. Just follow what we say. Do what we say, and we'll see that you reach heaven. If you don't follow us, if you don't listen to us, you will fall into hell. They have depicted hell so colorfully that anybody would become afraid. And they have described heaven so beautifully that it creates greed. Hell creates fear, heaven creates greed, and between these two, the whole of humanity has been reduced into spiritual slavery. My Yassin is not a spiritual slave, he is a rebel. Religion has nothing to do with slavery, it is pure rebellion. Hence I say courageousness is the most fundamental quality and we need courageous people in the world so that we can destroy all these strategies which have taken root in man. They have exploited humanity so long, it is time that it should all be stopped and stopped forever. Yeah. Yes, and what does he mean by that? His beliefs? Disciples. His, oh, okay. his disciple. It's more than I saw Donald Trump at the Wailing Wall. Why do they well at the wall? I mean, for so many, I guess, centuries, decades, um, they have welled. Why not accept life on life's terms? to ask for forgiveness, whereas they're the perpetrators of their own demise. You know, karma has a lot to do with it, so I'm kind of guessing that if you follow your karma or acknowledge that what you put out is you know, double time back, that you will not do such to cease that um, negative outcome. Um, religion, you're correct on that. Um, it makes a person think that that is the way to go. For some, yes. is a gift of existence, never forget it. Everybody has forgotten it, nobody is thankful to existence for it, for life. On the contrary, people are continuously complaining, they are not grateful. Such precious gift, such incomparable, unique gift, that people are so stupid that they can't appreciate it, they take it for granted. As if it were the right, it is not our right, we cannot claim it, we don't deserve it, we are not worthy of it. It is given to us not because we deserve it, but because existence cannot resist the temptation of giving it. It has to share it. It is overflowing with life energy. It does not know what to do with it. Hence, it goes on showering it. Worthy, unworthy, deserving, undeserving, sinners, saints. It does not matter. Existence goes on giving. That is its intrinsic nature. It gives because it has so much that it does not give. It will become a burden. It is like a cloud full of rainwater. It has to rain. It will rain on the stones. It will rain on the rocks. It will rain anywhere. It has to rain. To understand this is to be religious. This understanding brings a shift in your consciousness, then you're no longer complaining, then you're tremendously grateful, and that gratefulness is prayer. <clears throat> meditation without peace is dead force, not really meditation, but just some kind of concentration. And that is one of the greatest errors committed by many people. They think concentration is meditation. It is not. Meditation is just the opposite. Concentration is a tense state of mind. Meditation is a relaxed state of mind. And the miracle of relaxation is that when relaxation is total, the mind disappears. Mind can only exist with tensions, anxieties, worries. It feeds on them. Hence, concentration never leads you beyond the mind. It can manage to give you a certain strength of mind. It can make your mind function more efficiently more powerfully because you will be less distracted but it won't help you attain a state of no mind. Meditation is a state of no mind and only in meditation, in true meditation, does peace happen. It is just a natural fragrance of meditation. One can also be peaceful without meditation, then again something goes wrong. That peace remains only on the surface and deep inside there is always turmoil. 
One is sitting on a volcano, sitting peacefully, but the volcano is there and it can erupt any moment. Any excuse will do. Never force yourself to be peaceful. Never force the mind in any way on any subject in any direction. Enter relaxation, total relaxation, doing nothing, just being. And in that moment, when you are a pure being, doing nothing, no effort to be peaceful, no effort to, to concentrate, when there's no effort at all on your part in that effortless moment, meditation and peace happen simultaneously. And that brings victory, inner victory. It makes you the master of your own soul, of your own destiny. meditation and concentration because I'm gonna be honest, before coming here I was probably one of those people. And I probably I was definitely one of those people that confused the two. <laughs> like, oh well, meditate and you know, they think like, okay, well yeah, just do something. It's like, no, do nothing. It's like what do you mean do nothing? Like <laughs> Like when I think of concentration I think of being like tense. Like when I think of meditation I think of like I wouldn't say being loose but there, just like the balance between tension and looseness. Yes, they, you know, a lot of people don't know what meditation is, they don't know how to do it, they don't, they're not masters of it themselves, and then yet they try to teach it, and then they pretty much are probably teaching the opposite of what it really is, and it confuses people even more. And then more and more people are misrepresenting meditation. The same thing happens with martial arts. They say constant, you know, combat sport is like all competition. It's like the opposite of what art is supposed to be. And then people practice combat sport, they think they're practicing martial arts and they call it martial arts and not martial arts. So it's like someone who's who's concentrating, he said he's, he says he's meditating. That's not meditation, it's the opposite of meditation. So you can see it in many areas of life. Um, you can see it in religion as well. You know, people that really know the teachings of Christ or they live by it. And then people call themselves Christians and they're pretty much living the opposite of what, what he was supposed to teach. And then it ruins it for the people that are really living the way. Same thing with martial arts, religion, meditation. Well, see, I think it goes back to what Osho said about they create heaven, right? And it makes people greedy for it. Mm -hmm. And that just allows people to indulge their own grief, right? So I can become a priest, or I can become like, I can found a mega church. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I can create my world. Alright, 252. One can be calm and solid in two ways. One way is very cheap but superficial too. Easy to achieve but not worth achieving. That is cultivating a certain quality of calmness around yourself just on the surface, making it an attribute of your character. So even if there is turmoil within, at least to the outside world, you can appear calm and quiet. That's what the majority of people have been doing. They cultivate just a shallow, superficial, not even skin deep calmness around themselves. Just scratch them a little and they lose their calmness. Any accident is enough and you'll see that they're childish, immature. Somebody insults them and all calmness is gone. They go bankrupt and all calmness is gone. Then you can see the child immediately taking possession of them. They go into a tantrum. They forget all about their character. Then these so-called calm ones become angry, violent, they can murder, they can commit suicide. But society only wants you to be superficially calm and is not interested in your real transformation because it deals only with your outside. It has nothing to do with your inner, it has no interest in your inner world. Real calmness, authentic calmness, arises out of meditation, not out of cultivating character, but out of awareness. Meditation means awareness. Becoming aware of your anger dissolves it, and dissolves it from your very depths. It even disappears from your consciousness. Then you're really calm. Calm from the center to the circumference. Your whole being is calm. Then nothing can disturb you. 
neither life nor death, nothing can disturb you. Only when nothing can disturb you, when it becomes impossible to be disturbed, when even if you want to be disturbed, you become incapable of it, only then has something really valuable happened. It can happen only through awareness. Love has to be earthly, just as trees cannot grow without earth. They need roots in the earth. Love needs roots on the earth. The body represents the earth. But the tree goes high into the sky, it whispers with the clouds. Every tree has an ambition to touch the stars. But remember one secret, the higher the tree goes, the deeper go its roots. It is proportionate. The roots have to be as deep as the tree is high. The height and depth have to be absolutely balanced. With small roots, the tree cannot go very high, it will fall down. The old idea of love was abstract. A tree without roots in the earth, just going higher and higher and touching the stars, is nonsense. Yes, love has to rise above the earth, but it cannot rise without the help of the earth. It needs the earth's support. Love has to become something higher than passion, but passion has to be its support. It is not against passion. Higher does not mean against. The higher contains the lower. It is bigger than the lower, not against it. The higher transforms even the quality of the lower. It beautifies it. It transforms passion. That is the meaning of the word compassion. It is passion transformed. It is passion become luminous. Then it is compassion, but it is not against passion. The flowers on the tops of the trees are gifts from the earth. Although they look so beautiful, their color, from their fragrance, their beauty cannot be found anywhere. If you dig in the earth, you will not find the colors, the beauty, the fragrance. But the earth contains them. The, sim the tree simply helps the earth to reveal its secrets. Those flowers were contained in the earth. Those colors are part of the earth, of the earth's chemistry. It is the earth's gift to the tree. The earth is not against the tree. A real Buddha, a real awakened person, is a bridge between the two. This world and that world. Between the material and the spiritual. It is only through meditation that one comes to realize that one belongs to God, that one is not without roots in his in existence, that one is not an orphan. Without meditation, one remains an orphan. That is the misery of the man who has never known the taste of meditation. He feels afraid. He is continuously surrounded by all kinds of anxieties and fears. Although it is there because he cannot see anybody protecting him, there is no security, nobody to look after him, and he seems so small compared to the universe. The universe is so vast, almost like an ocean, and he is just a dewdrop. The moment you understand that the ocean is not your enemy, but your home that you belong to, that you are inseparably one with it, great rejoicing arises and you feel blessed. One is bathed in a new kind of light that goes on pouring from the beyond. Meditation is nothing but the art of opening up to the beyond, of coming to terms with existence, of feeling at home, at rest. Use the mind when it is needed. It has its utility. It is a good machine, a biocomputer. It has all the memories, all the information. So whenever you need it, use it. But there is no need to allow it to cover you 24 hours a day, day in, day out, year in, year out. It should be put aside when it is not being used. Consciousness should be allowed to reflect reality. Thank God is everywhere. Once your consciousness reflects that which is, you know God needs no proof. Only God is and nothing else from every... Every form is a manifestation of God, and to know it is to rejoice, because that means there is no death, no misery, no darkness. One has arrived home. So much pain while stretching. That's the thing that has my attention. Yeah, that's it. I am. I'm just emptying my mind as I go into these stretches and go, what is going on?
actually are you uh, you breathing while you stretch it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a lot of people stretch, but they don't really know how to stretch. The breathing is a big part. Yeah, that's very true. How's your toe, Ben? Your toe? Good. It's good. You heal it on its own? Yeah, I've been doing a lot of stretching. I've been doing a lot of stuff for it, so. But so there you think you're getting think you're getting better at the stretching, right? You feel like it? <laughs> <laughs> you should say you have in pain. <laughs> it's just it's just Monday. And I stretch this weekend because I knew it was gonna be like this today, but yeah. Yeah, it's like stretching to me like I tell my people is that some people think that by forcing themselves to stretch, you know, you gotta inhale and exhale. When you exhale, you just relax, you meditate, and let the muscle do its thing instead of forcing them, you know, on your body. That's so why I do my stretching. Yeah. So I'm telling me if I don't breathe, I can't do certain stretch. Oh, yeah. Until I exhale and I relax, then I can do it. It's counterintuitive, right? Mm -hmm. It's counterintuitive yeah. because as your muscle stretches and feels pain, it wants to clench up. Right. And you just have to breathe and just release and just yes, backwards. But yes, yeah, Ifu, it gets better. It gets better every every, every Thursday is better. <laughs> Sifu goes, okay, now you guys can spar. I'm like, and I, but at the end, I was like, that was perfect because I didn't want to do any of that. Well, I mean, it helps yeah. in a real world situation. Like you said, with training, like, all right, you can do all that still spar. It's like, that's conditioning. Yeah. And with the weights, if you're not careful, it will burn you out too. Like the bench, weight bench. Yeah. I think I always, because I come in with so much energy and focus to do, do my limits, you know. And when I get it and I push myself, it's like, take a lot of art. Yeah. Just so you guys know, so you could learn, um, one of my uh, fitness clients, like, he, he, like, never stretches, like, he, can't, he, like, hates stretching. So I only do fitness with him, like, a lot of weight training. But he was, uh, on, he was training on his own, and I guess he was <laughs> at the gym, and I guess he got distracted. He didn't have good form on the clean and press, where you bring it up like this. Yeah. And um, I was talking to, to Trinity about it because she knows a lot about those types of injuries. So basically, he tore something mm -hmm. over mm -hmm. here, something like on his back or something oh, like that. Back. Mm -hmm. And um, he he's out for at least a month. And they mm -hmm. said it's not it's not healing properly. But she was saying that if you go like this, that's how that will happen. Yeah. When you bring it out, you're supposed to go like this. Right, I've seen people do that. Boom, then it goes switch. Yeah, but like, that. like I'm saying, if you bring it like oh, this, I got you. No. you know, that's how you get it. Yeah, if you work it out. Yeah. No. So, but I'm just saying, like, the, it just highlights the importance of stretching and it highlights the importance of good form. We don't really do those exercises, but if you do, you have to be very careful with, like, not using too much weight and yeah, proper smash. form. Especially, like, on a snatch. And then Annette, the way that she hurt herself, she had her leg up on something, like say a ledge, 
and then she went, she just went like down like this hard, mm. and she she tore this. Oh. She, she's out for like at least a month. So I'm just saying, oh. she was stretching while she was cold outside, and she just went right. So I'm just saying like learn from that, learn from other people's injuries, mm. so you don't get injured yourself. Yeah. You know, like you guys are like warming up, you did a jump rope, do some weights. Make sure when you do the weights, you don't use too much weight, and if you if you do weights, have good form. And then now we're stretching out, our body's already warmed up, right? But if you skip something, you know, it could be some, you know, if you don't warm up or, you know, stretch properly, you could um, injure yourself. Also, I was watching a video, you know, saw the Cavs game last night, they lost, right? And then they're talking about the game afterwards, and they're talking about, the commentators are saying LeBron didn't go through the same routine that he normally goes through before a game. And they said they, they could tell something was off. And they're saying like people, humans are like a creature of, of habit. Oh, so you break, yeah, you break the habits, then it could throw, throw, you, off. throw you off. So the same thing here, like if you if we don't stretch, if you don't warm up, it could lead, to, eventually in the long run, it could lead to injuries, you know? Especially when you get older, I think warming up becomes more important. Makes that. Stretching becomes more important. So don't ignore it, especially as you get older. But you learn to appreciate those recovery times of sleeping, um, stretching, warming up. And lightweight, don't go heavy all the time. Like even my body, I could tell, like if I go heavy every day, it's I'm, I'm risking over overtraining and tearing something, you know? So Sometimes I go heavy on the bench, sometimes I go light, um, but maxing out, I've been uh, very careful about doing that because most of the time that I hurt myself in some way, it's from maxing out, like too much weight, you know? Yeah, because I'm only, I'm only trying to do it like, that's why when I train, I'm by myself, I don't do no weight lifting and all that stuff. I do a lot of cardio, I'm kind of steady. Because when I do a weight, it's going to be today and Mondays. That way I don't overdo myself, overwork myself, and hurt myself. I, like I look for Monday to do fitness, I'm looking for those days. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to do it too much every day, because for my age, it's very dangerous. And it, plus it takes me a long time to heal, because I'm older. It does take a long time to heal. Yeah, it's older, yeah. Also look at lightweight, small reps. Yeah. You know.